Welcome to the IDS training video on the Stitch Sequence Viewer. Within the Stitch Sequence Viewer, the Stitch Sequence views Viewer usually docks on the left hand side of our design workspace, which you can see here on the left side. In the, in the Stitch Sequence Viewer, you see that you do have several frames, and depending upon your design itself, will um, actually dictate how many frames you have. And I'm just going to scroll down here because you can see with the stitch sequence viewer sometimes you can have more than um, what the actual area holds so that you can scroll up and down and you can see in this design I do have 16 frames. Now first things first with the stitch sequence viewer to turn that on or off there's two different ways. To turn it on and off if we go up to view on the main menu bar. Scroll down to stitch sequence with a check mark in front of it, it means that it's showing. You can also see the hotkey is F2. If I left click on this, this will actually turn it off and you can see that dis the bar disappears from the left hand side. I'll go back to view, stitch sequence, left click on that again and it will turn it back on. Again, the F2 key on your keyboard is the hotkey. So if we left click, or I'm sorry, if we press the F2 key, it will turn that stitch sequence viewer on or off. The other way to turn the stitch sequence viewer on or off is on our view toolbar. And on our view toolbar, the icon looks like a piece of film. And if I ha hover my cursor over that icon, it will actually say stitch sequence. With that icon pressed in, the stitch sequence viewer is on. If I left click on it, it is not pressed in anymore and the stitch sequence viewer is off. So I left click on it and that stitch sequence viewer is currently on. Now within the stitch sequence viewer you can select areas and or lines um, simply with a left click inside of the frame. Each area or line is a frame and that frame is numbered. You can see that the frame is numbered on the left bottom left hand side of the frame itself and if I place a left click on the frame. It will highlight the frame and act as a right click on screen. You can see the area that is selected because it does have blue and white flashing lines going around it. To deselect an area, I will just right click off to the side on my design workspace. So by left clicking inside of a frame, it acts as a right click on screen. To, sh to show you this, if I right click inside that same area, it will select that area. You can see that's selected with a blue and white flashing line as well as it's selected inside the frame it's shaded in gray. Again I will right click off to the side on a blank area of my design workspace to deselect. There are also other functions in the stitch sequence viewer that you can use um, as far as control and shift go. If I want to select multiple frames but only select frames um, that I specify. If I hold the control key down while left clicking inside of a frame, it will select only the areas that I want to select. Control will also allow me to deselect any frame that is selected. So while holding the control key down, I will left click inside of a frame that is selected and it will actually deselect it. To deselect everything, I let go of control and I just right click off to the side. So control allows us to select frames that we want to select and also deselect frames that are already selected. Shift will allow me to select frames in between two parameters. So for instance, if I'd like to select frame 1 and then select everything between frame 1 and frame 5, if I hold my shift key down, and then left click inside frame 5, it will select everything in between. Again, I'm just going to right click off to the side to deselect those areas. Also in the stitch sequence viewer, we are able to program commands uh, that are available to us within each frame. So on each frame, each frame again on the left hand side is numbered and it will show us each area within the frame. Like we had said before, when you do left click inside of a frame it selects it on screen as a right click. 
But what we're going to go over now are the functions uh, buttons within the frame itself. On the left hand side of each frame, each numbered frame, you can see the numbers on the left hand side, the lower left hand side of the frame, there are two icons. One is an eyeball and one is a padlock. With the eyeball, the eyeball uh, that has nothing obstructing it means that that area is visible. If we were to take this area, and I'm going to select it so we know which one that we're looking at, it will actually turn that area invisible. And uh, to see this a little bit more clearly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the image in the background. So we're going to go to View, left click on View, and Hide Image. I'll left click on that. And we can see that this white area is selected. I will right click off to the side to deselect. And as I place my cursor over the eyeball, I will left click on that eyeball and it actually turns that area invisible. Now we can see that there's no stitching in there. This actually does not delete the stitches but turns it invisible in case we need to do any editing and that area obstructs, obstructs us from getting into that editing area. Um, also another reason for turning it visible or invisible is to see what that area would look like without stitching. So to turn that back on we just left click on that eyeball, left click, and it will turn that area back on. We can also turn multiple areas visible or invisible by selecting uh, the multiple frames or selecting it straight on screen. On the left hand side uh, I am going to choose everything between frame 1 and let's go ahead and choose everything between 1 and 7. And remember to do that if we left click inside frame 1, scroll down, hold our shift key and left click inside frame 7. That will select everything in between. Now you can also do control and control will allow you to select only the ones you want to select. Um, we could left click on each eyeball for each frame uh, but an easy way to select them all uh, or, or turn them all visible or invisible is the eyeball at the top. When we left click on that eyeball at the top, it will do the same function, visible or invisible, but for all the areas that are selected, or areas and lines that are selected. So I place my cursor over that eyeball at the top of the stitch sequence viewer, left click once, and you can see on the left hand side, those turned all those areas visible, or I'm sorry, invisible. And you can see on the right hand side, when we are in just the regular stitch view, those areas are invisible. Now one thing about visible invisible is that we are viewing it in the regular stitch view. This will also turn it invisible in the other views. But in the regular stitch view, if we go to view and then we go to uh, 3D stitch view, left click on that, it will still show those areas. But if I do try to select the area with a right click, it will not select because those areas are invisible. Anytime an area is invisible, you cannot select it. So let's turn our 3D view off. So view and then 3D stitch view. I'll left click on that and it will turn it back invisible. To turn them back visible, we could select every eyeball on each frame with a left click and turn them back on individually. To select them all, or to select all the ones that are invisible, if we click on the arrow at the top of the stitch sequence viewer, the arrow that points to the right, we left click on that, we can uh, select the first option which is select all invisible. And we left click on that, it will select them all. You can't see it on screen because they are invisible. But now to turn them back visible, if we place our cursor over the eyeball and left click once, it will turn them back visible. So we can use, uh, we can do one at a time on each frame. We can select multiple, click on the visible invisible. Uh, and we can select multiple by either using the shift key or the control key. The other function that we see on the left hand side of each frame is a padlock. Now this locks the area and what it what locking means is to lock the stitch properties, uh, meaning that it will not change the stitch types uh, or any settings that you have changed 
on the design you have done in IDS. It works very much the same uh, as the visible invisible in the functionality and that when you left click on the padlock it will lock that area. So if I do try to select it and then change the stitch type it will keep the same stitch type. I can unlock it just by left clicking on that. Now as a side note when we do bring in imported files or stitch files those are padlocked and the reason they are padlocked is because they are seen as needle penetrations. This is a command file. A stitch file is a command file, whereas an IDS file is a design file. A command file is a machine ready file format that uh, tells the machine when to move the pantograph and when to drop down the needle, giving the stitch coordinates to the machine and that what ultimately makes your embroidery pattern. The design file is a are actually areas and lines filled with stitch properties. Now unfortunately the machine does not read a design file uh, but the machine reads a stitch file. So when you do bring in a machine file like a DST file format and that's through your import function it will have all your areas padlocked. On the left hand side uh, on our stitch sequence viewer you, you'll see that padlock. So uh, you can do each individual frame or we can select multiple frames and this time I will show you how to select multiple frames with a control. I will left click on a frame, hold my control and left click on the ones that I'd like to select, that I'd like to padlock. And I can click the padlock at the top instead of clicking each individual frame and it will padlock all the ones that I have selected. So I'll left click on that and you can see on the left hand side it will be padlocked. Another function that automatically locks the area is if I move individual stitch points and the reason is is because I am overriding what the software has programmed. So I am moving individual pattern points and that will automatically lock the area. So usually that is the last thing that you want to do in a design. I'm going to right click off to the side to deselect. Now if I do want to select all the locked items I can use that arrow at the top again. I'll left click on the arrow and I'll scroll down to the last object or I'm sorry the last option which is select all locked and then again I can left click on that padlock and unlock it. To deselect the areas I will right click off to the side. The other options that you can see right on the stitch sequence viewer are the color change, trim, and stop function. If you can see on each frame, underneath each frame, there are three icons. One is a rainbow, one is a scissors, and one is a stop sign. Now each frame will stitch and then after each frame there will either be a command or no command. When frame one stitches, we can see that it stitches this area. After frame one stitches, we can see that there is no command. I can see that there's no command because these icons are all grayed out. Um, if I scroll down, I'll show you an area that has a command. We can see that frame five stitches and after frame five stitches, there is a color change function, meaning that frame five will stitch and then the machine will do a color change and the color change function is denoted by the the rainbow here. So with that selected that means that frame 5 will stitch and then a color change. Now the next one over is a scissors. A scissors denotes that there is a trim and I am not seeing a trim uh, between frames 1 and 9 but I do see a trim here after frame 9 stitches. So frame 9 will stitch and then the command happens after the frame. There's a trim command so that will tell the machine to trim after this area is stitched. Now you can see that color changes do not have a trim command. A color change will automatically do a trim and then switch to the needle that you program into the machine. Now a stop function uh, will actually convert to 
a color change in the DST format. So that way on your machine you can tell your machine to stop at each color change. So we can input trim commands, we can input color changes, and we can input stops just by selecting the functions underneath each frame. So for instance, frame 1 will stitch and then there's no function, meaning that there's no command. There's no color change, there's no trim, and there's no stop. Same thing with after frame 2. But let's say we would like a color change after frame 1 stitches. So we can left click on the rainbow, and when we left click on the rainbow, it asks us what color would you like to change it to. I'll select a color, press OK, and then you can see that after frame 1 stitches there is a color change, and then frame 2 will stitch. Now it changes all the colors between 2 and 5 because there are no color change functions after 2, after 3, after 4, but after 5 there is a color change which goes to the blue. We can also take a color change out just by left clicking on the highlighted rainbow. So I'll left click once, it'll take the color change out and change it to the color of the frame that's above it. We can also do trims this way. We can see that frame 1 stitches and then if you can see in this frame there is a traveling stitch that goes between frame 1 and frame 2. If we would like to take out that traveling stitch and input a trim, well, uh, after frame 1, if we left click inside the scissors, it will act as a trim for that design or after that area stitches. So frame 1 will stitch and then there will be a trim and then frame 2 will stitch. After that, there's no trim, there's just a traveling stitch. So we can input a, a trim if we would like just by left clicking. You can take those back out just by left clicking on it again. Also when dealing with commands, you can do this with multiple areas like we did with the visible, invisible, lock, and unlock. So if we left click inside frame 1, and again I'm going to select multiple areas, uh, I'm going to hold the shift key and left click inside frame 5. And what I would like to do with these areas is put a trim in between each area. And an easy way to do that is to go up to the properties icon and, and that's at the top of the stitch sequence viewer. I will left click and you can see on the right hand side of this dialog box um, this is another way that you can also do the visible invisible. So if we can see that it's check marked it's visible meaning that we can see it on screen. Uh, lock or unlock so a check mark will mean lock uh, right now they are unlocked. We can see visually the padlock is unlocked, but we can also see here that there is no check mark within lock. Trim, there is a grayed out check mark, but if we left click inside of it, it will take the trim out. If we left click inside of it again, it will put trims in after each area I have selected. Now when I do that, it also says, okay, you have done a user defined trim. You can see that down here at the bottom. You can also do a stop or no stop. Right now there is no stop. So I will press OK and as soon as I press OK you can see that I have trims uh, in between each of the areas that I had selected. I will right click off to the side to deselect and you can see that each scissors is highlighted. So frame 1 will stitch. After frame 1 stitches there's a trim then frame 2 will stitch. After frame 2 stitches there is a trim. Remember that the function or the command will happen after each frame stitches. It does not happen before, it happens after. You can see that does get a little confusing as we get down to the cent like to uh, lower in the stitch sequence viewer. You can see you've got above and below. You've got commands above and below. But it does happen after a frame stitches. Now conversely we can take that trim out by left clicking inside frame 1. I'll hold my shift key, left click inside frame 2 so that all those are selected. We'll click on the properties box at the top, left click once, left click next to trim so that we take the trim out, press OK and it will take the trims out so those scissors are all grayed out. 
We can also do this with the stop function. After a frame stitches, if we place our cursor over the stop icon, we can left click, it will highlight that stop function, and uh, turn it red, meaning that there's a stop. Now when we do export to a DST, this actually converts to a color change. And the reason is, is because on our machine, that's where we actually program the machine to stop after each color change. So to turn the stop on, you just left click on the stop icon, or to turn it off, you just left click on that again. Again, you can do that with multiple frames just by left clicking inside the frame. You can use control or shift. This time I'm going to use shift. I'll left click inside frame five. That will select everything in between. I will select my stitch properties at the top, left click, or, and then click on stop, place a check mark in there, press OK, and then it will put stops after each area. To turn those off, if I'd like to turn those off, again I can click up at the properties icon at the top, left click on that, turn the stop off, make sure that there's no, uh, there's no check mark next to stop, press OK, and it will turn that off. I will right click off to the side to deselect. We can also see on the stitch sequence viewer the arrow at the top. The arrow at the top, as we've seen before, we can select all invisible areas and lines. That's with our first option. You can select all invisible areas only, all invisible lines only. You can select all lines, which are visible, select all areas that are visible, or select all locked. And all these select options are with a right click. So if we select all areas and left click on that, it will select all those areas, all those stitch areas with a right click on screen or a left click inside your frame. To deselect the areas, I will just right click off to the side. So this is an easy way to select all areas, all lines, all visible, invisible, or all locked and unlocked. One of the main functions of the stitch sequence viewer is to change around how items stitch out on the design. On the left hand side, again, we can see the stitch sequence viewer and each frame is numbered and that represents when that frame is going to stitch out, when that area or line will stitch out. So we can see here that frame one will stitch and then frame two, three, four, so on and so forth. We can change around how these frames are stitched out a couple of different ways. When we left click inside of a frame, it does select it as a right click on screen and it will have that shaded in gray when we left click on it. To move the frame to a specific location, if we right click inside the frame after we left click, we have some move functions. We have a move to, a move to top, and a move to bottom. If we select move to top, left click on that once, it will move it to the first position and you can see everything has been shifted down one. If we right click on that again and select move to bottom, that will move it to the last position and that will stitch it last. Now if we would like to move it to a specific position, what we would do is find the position that we'd like to move it to. I'd like to move it back to frame two, so it would be between frame one and frame two. I'll scroll back down to find the frame. I'll right click inside of it, select move two, and when I select move two, it says, which frame would you like to move it before? I will type in two, press okay, and it moves it back to frame two. Anytime I am moving frames around, I do want to right click off to the side and regenerate my stitches with the go button. That will allow the software to recalculate the stitching if necessary. I can do this to one frame at a time or I can do it to multiple frames at a time. So let's say we want to move uh, all the blue to a specific area. We'll left click inside frame six. I'll hold my shift key, left click inside frame eight. With those three selected, I will right click inside one of them. It doesn't matter which one. I'll right click and I'll say move to the top because I want these three areas to stitch first. When I left click on move to the top, I want you to notice that they, 
the areas that are selected will stay in the same order, but all move to the top or to the first positions. Left click on that, so we then have one, two, and then three. I will right click off to the side to deselect, regenerate my stitches for any necessary recalculation, and now the blue will stitch first. So again, I can select all these areas. I'm going to hold my shift key, left click inside frame one, and left click inside frame three. And let's say we want to move it before number nine. We place our cursor inside one of the frames, it doesn't matter which one. Right click, say move to, and we will move it before index number nine. And press OK. I'll right click off to the side to, re uh, to deselect and then regenerate my stitches. We can also move frames by left clicking, holding, and dragging. Let's say I want to take frame six just by itself and move it to a different position. I left click inside frame six. After I left click on it once while it's selected, I will left click, hold, and drag. And as I drag, you can see that the command bar will highlight black. Whenever I find a um, command bar that I'd like to put it in, so right now it's in between four and five, I will let go of my left click and it will move it in between those two frames. So again, I can just left click, hold, and drag. Now I will move it between frame six and seven where it was before let go of my left click, and it will then move it. We can also do this with multiple frames by selecting the multiple frames with either a shift or control. It doesn't matter which frame I select with a left click, hold, and drag, but I'll left click, hold, and drag, and I will move it between frame 10 and 11. It will move all three of those between 10 and 11. So what we're doing here is we're actually changing the order that our design stitches out. Again, I'll move it back just with a left click, hold, and drag, right click off to the side to deselect, and generate the stitches if necessary. Another toolbar that coincides with the stitch sequence viewer is the color sequence bar on the left hand side. Now on this design I had made one change in that frame one, the blue stitches first. So if we look on the left hand side, our color chips will coincide with the stitch sequence viewer in that the first the first color that stitches is blue and then white then blue again green light blue black and then white again we can utilize these color chips by selecting the color chip and it'll select the appropriate area on screen if i place my cursor over the blue the first blue if i left single click it will only select the blue in that position. So in the first position, it only select one area of blue. If I place my cursor over that color chip again and left double click, it will select all the blue in the design. This is a way to select the areas with a right click on screen or a left click inside the frames. So with these selected, I can then do changes uh, within the stitch sequence viewer or the stitch properties. Now also, while those areas are selected, I can actually move those color chips to, to change the actual stitch sequencing or the order of the stitching. With those areas selected, if I left click, hold, and drag on either one of these color chips, it doesn't matter which one, I can move it to an area inside my color sequence bar that will place it that will place it in between colors. So as you see, I've moved it in between the light blue and the black. So now it is stitching in that order. So I'll take that blue color chip, left click, hold, and drag, move it after the white, let go of my left click, and it will move it back into position. So you can see it moved all three that were selected.